Hey guys, the objective of this video is to look at the lateral capacity of single piles and the lateral deflection of single piles. So piles are often used due to their capacity to sustain horizontal or lateral loads. The lateral capacity of a single pile may be limited by the shearing capacity of the surrounding soil or by the structural capacity of the pile itself. So if the rotation at the head of a pile is not constrained, this is known as a free head pile. If the rotation at the head is constrained by the pile cap, the pile is called a fixed head pile. So in this diagram, you can see the possible failure modes for a free head pile. In mode 1, the soil fails, resulting in a large deflection and rotation in the pile. In mode, mode 2, the pile fails before the soil does, and we have a plastic hinge forming. In this second diagram, you can see the possible failure modes for a fixed head pile. In mode 1, the soil fails first. In mode 2 and mode 3, the pile experiences a structural failure and forms a plastic hinge. In mode 3, there are two plastic hinges. Also note that because rotation is constrained in fixed head piles, we have a reaction moment in the pile cap. The governing failure mode will depend on the properties of the soil and the pile. So in cohesive soils, we can use these charts to determine the governing failure mode. So you need to, for, for mode 1, you need to first determine the embedment ratio, L on D, and another ratio, E on D where E is the height of the lateral load above the ground surface. You then project horizontally across to find a new term known as the ultimate lateral resistance, HU divided by C multiplied by D squared. And since we know CU and D squared, we can multiply these values with whatever value you get here, and that that will give you the value for HU, which is the lateral resistance. No, the lateral capacity for mode 1. Similarly for the second chart, if you know the yield moment and the ratio E on D, you can determine the value for HU divided by CU multiplied by D squared. And from there you can find the lateral capacity for mode 2. So we use these two charts for mode 1 and mode 2 for both free and fixed head piles. For mode 3, we use the second chart, but project upwards towards the restrained line. Also, for fixed head piles, depending on which failure mode governs for lateral loading, the maximum moment will be given by these equations. Determining the lateral capacity in cohesionless soils is a very similar procedure, except the charts now look a little bit different. And for fixed head piles in cohesionless soils, we have a different set of equations for the maximum moment. Let's now move on to the lateral deflection of single piles. The lateral deflection and rotation of a single pile can be estimated using the theory of elasticity. So heavily over consolidated clays exhibit relatively uniform soil modulus. For free head piles, the displacement and rotation are given by these equations, where an H and M correspond to the horizontal load and moment applied to the top of the pile respectively. For fixed head piles, the displacement is given by this equation, and there is no rotation. To determine the factors IPF, IPM, I theta H, I theta M, and IPF, we need to first determine a relative flexibility factor, KR, given by this equation here. IP here is the second moment of area of the pile. Once we know KR, we need to find the ratio of L on D, and we can then 
determine the factors, the I factors from this table. Normally consolidated clays and sand often exhibit a linearly increasing modulus of depth. For free head piles, the displacement and rotation are given by these equations. And for fixed head piles, the displacement is given by this equation here. Note that we have a new term known as NH, which is the rate of change of modulus with depth. So similarly, we need to determine the pile flexibility factor Kn and use this table to determine the I dash factors. In the next video, I'll go through an example covering the lateral deflection of single piles. Hope this helps, guys.